Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. I have for you today a pattern tour of a brand new shawl pattern that is my last pattern of the year 2019. Also, I guess my last pattern of the decade. <laughs> How crazy is that? And it is, I gotta say, a whopper. It is a gigantic shawl. Y'all, if you've been watching, have seen bits and pieces of it. I have showed it off in some of my vlogs and you've seen pieces of it and it is finally finished. So yay, here it is. That was some, I'm channeling. My son's getting ready to turn 13 and he, his throat cracks a lot. And so apparently I'm channeling him. Who knows? So what this is, is this is a shawl that is in Malabrigo. Specifically, it is in Rios. There we go. Rios is a super wash worsted weight yarn that is super amazingly fun to work with. It knits beautifully. Hey, let's focus, people. <laughs> it doesn't want to. So the stats on it is that is a pure merino superwash about 210 yards in the 100 grams and they suggest a US 6 through 8. Um, I'll figure out the millimeters on that. For my pattern I used a number 8. I just checked with it and I used a 47 inch circular needle. If you've got a 60 go for it because this baby is enormous and obviously you're like well show it to me lady uh-huh uh-huh sorry <laughs> a little moment there so now what i have discovered is if i hold up something and it in it it, it kind of occludes the entire screen like if i hold it up my webcam flips out it does this weird little joggy joggy thing um and it is bad. Actually, I'm gonna do it on purpose just so you can see it do the little flip out, okay? So I'm gonna hold it up. You see, it's flipping out. <laughs> so I can't hold the whole thing up, it is too big. So what we have here, so I'm gonna hold up a smaller amount of it. It is a, and I, I'll have a picture of it. I have a blocking picture of it so you can see its actual shape. It is a top down, shawl that starts it is a three panel triangle style shawl and what i mean by that it doesn't actually become a triangle but if you think about a top down triangle it has that center increase and you increase on the edges and so you really the top down triangle is made out of two triangles with the points going this way so your top down triangle is straight across the top and so you got the, the, the flat part and then it comes down to the point at the bottom. But in reality, it's made up of two other triangles that the flat parts are on the bottom and they come to a point right at the bottom of the neck. A three quarter, you have a triangle here, a triangle in the center, and then a triangle off to one side. So you've got three uh, triangles creating your top down thing. That is why you get that the spine so instead of having just one spine, so here, if I did this, we would just sort of have a top-down triangle, but then you've got the second one, and then you've got the third one, okay? And so what I did is you knit that in this fun and easy texture pattern. Let me see if I can get it up close without making my computer wig out. Here we go. There you can see. It's just a simple knit pearl texture pattern that I really enjoy knitting and can knit for almost forever. And it gives a nice drape. And so you've got those two increase points in the center and you're increasing on the edge. And then I decided I wanted a lace trim because who doesn't love lace trims? I don't know. If you like lace, lace trim seems obvious. But I didn't want to deal with 
because what happens is you've got that spine and then you have to work the increases into the lace. And I didn't want to do that because I wanted an uninterrupted trim. See how the increases come down? But then it goes directly into the lace. I wanted an uninterrupted trim. I didn't want that. I mean, sometimes that little where you're doing the increases, it's really cool. And you can make some really fine, de fun details with it. My, um, there's water at the bottom of the ocean. It looks like whale tails down the back because of how those increases work. But specifically in this pattern, I did not want to do that. So what I have is this lace bottom that I think is beautiful. It is also a very simple pattern. It is only four rows that you work over and over again. But to avoid doing any increases in the increase points here, what you do here, let me put her up here and maybe that'll avoid having my computer have a little wig fit. So you can see, oops, let's take the fuzzy towel off. Okay, you can see these here, and then it goes, see how long this is? So I'm gonna pull this up so you can see the lace. There we go, there's the lace. So what I did is instead of continuing with the, the top-down increases, I decided, hey, let's go all pie shawl on this. And technically not actually pie shawl, but half pie shawl. So it's a fun mathematical thing where you're doing all kinds of weird geometry math. And frankly, I can't explain it at all. But what you're essentially doing is doubling the amount of stitches. So in a pie shawl or a half pie shawl, it's like you go a certain distance, and you double the stitches, and then you go twice the previous distance, and you double the stitches, and then you go twice the pre, you know, so it's it's a, a progression. So what you do is after you finish with this easy texture, it's you work the selvage, and then you knit front back all the way across, and you make a bajillion stitches. And by a bajillion, I mean, where's my, where you add to? The increase row ends with 529 stitches. Booyah! That's a lot of stitches. It's a lot of lace. But it's super fun. And you get this big, beautiful lace thing. And I'm going to show a picture from the pattern. It makes this massive shawl. And it takes what is normally three quarters, which is it's like straight lines, straight lines, straight line along the bottom and puts a curve, let me see if I, I'm off, here we go, puts a curve and it curves all the way up and it fans out. And what I thought it looked like was those fan corals that you see in all of the nature specials where they're doing on coral reefs and they're those huge fan corals that are like waving in the water. And so this, I even completely missed this color was Malabrigo's, is Malabrigo's special color for 2019. They did the Pantone color of 2019, which is Living Coral. So this is the Living Coral color. And just, be, you know, the whole color coral thing got me thinking. And so I thought it looked like a fan coral. So the name of it is Anella mollis, which is the Latin name for the fan corals. So that's where the name came from. Okay, what other details do you need on this shawl? So it is takes four worsted weight skeins. I used Malabrigo Rios in Living Coral. That is 210 yards a skein. So that's two, four, six, eight, 840 yards. Now, I didn't use every inch of that. I try to put some wiggle room in every pattern because I know not all y'all are gonna swatch, but you are really looking at needing around 800 yards for this 800 yards of worsted weight yarn. So. Boom, that's a lot of yarn. Now, I know people are gonna ask me, could you do this with fingering weight? Sure, you could knit it with fingering weight. Uh, you would probably want to use a size six needle. And 
I have no idea how much yardage you would need. That's what happens when you're substituting. You're going to need a lot. Uh, most of the times a fingering weight uh, skein is around 400 yards. So I would have at least two skeins. And this, so this part here, the lace part, once you've done that huge increase, you can continue making this you can make the lace longer and longer and longer. Um, it'll just kind of fan out more. It might eventually get to the point where it's almost gonna function like a ruffle. It's gonna start folding in, but that would be absolutely beautiful. It depends on how big you wanna make it. Obviously, the if you switch over to fingering weight or a lighter weight yarn, it's gonna make change the size. Now the size of this one, and I'm kidding you not, it's huge. So the distance from this point down to here is 19 and a half inches, okay? Then the distance across the back, there we go, the distance across the back and the distance from this point, if you lay it out flat, from this point all the way up to where the points curve together, it's actually a square, which makes sense because I based it on a, a kind of square design. So that is 43 inches, which is 109 centimeters. Oh, and the 19.5 is roughly 49 and a half centimeters. So it is, it's, it's just massive. But one of the great things is the three quarter shawls. Come here, silent partner. I'm gonna put it on like a traditional, let's see if you can see what I'm doing. I might need to scoot backwards and I'm shifting. <laughs> that shifted my background. You can see a little bit of peek of what's behind me. There we go. Okay. So I'm taking the center back and putting it centered on the back. And you can see how far around this comes. Look, and look how far down it goes. See how long that is? That is one of the amazing things about this shape of shawl. You don't have any problems with keeping it on. And this is long enough that you can bring it up like that. And then you still have all of this and you can bring it up like that. And you can see how much. And what I wanna show you is so you've got all this in front and the back, it's still a full fall all the way down your back. So it is a as full coverage really as a shawl gets. And it's going to stay on. And you've got all this beautiful, I just, I really like the way this came out. It's so pretty, don't y'all think? Now I wanna show you the other way I really thought would be cool to wear it, is if you position that center back on the neck, like on the shoulder, this you've still got all this, which you can put behind, right? And then you can pull all this across the back and bring it around. And so in the front, you have this must coverage. Look at all that. And in the back, you still have all of that. So it's just, if you're looking for a shawl that's gonna cover you and keep you warm, if you are frustrated by the smaller shawls, if you're a larger lady like me, if you're tall, it has a lot of room in this. And as I said, if you want it even bigger, you need more yardage, but you can keep on going. Now, keep in mind, this is 529 stitches, so it eats, eats, eats yarn from, okay, from here, to about where the trim started. So the texture took about two balls. And then just the trim took the second two balls. So you can see <laughs> this trim eats yarn. Okay, I'm gonna scooch this all up again. Pull it down. Oh, doesn't that, I, I just, I just, I'm in love with this shawl. Oh, my tap dancer. And look, look how much is hanging down the back. This is upside down here. Look at that. How pretty is that? Is that flipped over to see? Look, this is even flipped over. There's so much fabric here. There. 
I mean, that is a lot of fabric. And then you have all your lace. And it's almost like a cape. So do we have all of the information that you need? Um, size eight needles, long as you can possibly get, 60 inches, Bob your uncle. Um, the setup is four rows. The textured body is a 12 row repeat. So that's it. You have the increase row and a return row. And then the lace trim is four rows. So really it's a very straightforward pattern. It's just a whole lot of knitting that makes a big, beautiful shawl. Um, the instructions are fully written out, but also for the lace, there is a chart if you like charts. So you can follow that. There's actually two charts because you do something a little funny at the end to get it to, to, to work right. I do a, um, a small... I added extra stitches, you know, just so you can pull out the points because, you know, 529 isn't enough. <laughs> and what else? <laughs> so the stitches, knit, knit front back, knit two together, um, make one right, make one left, purl, purl two together, and that's on the wrong side. That's just for the bind off. Um, and your slip stitch edge, slip slip knit, yarn over, there's really nothing particularly. So the make ones are so that you keep this relatively solid. You can see there are some holes here, but um, it, it's, it's not like full on yarn over. These aren't, you can see that you have some holes here and that's from the blocking. They're not actually yarn overs. Those are the make ones and it's just how the make ones interact. Let me get it over here. So big, it just keeps dragging. Here, let me show you. So there, those are make ones. Let me show you real for a little bit. Here we go. That's what the texture looks like. And that's what the lace looks like. Oop, oop, oop. There we go. And this is what the drape looks like. I mean, look, if, and that is the super wash. The super wash makes it lovely and drapey. That is Anella Mollis. Yeah, check in the description below and you will find links to the places where you can get it online as a digital download. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.